we're at a point in time coming off of a, a wild Saturday of college football. People are consistently peeking over at this board. He actually would not be my number one overall pick, nor would I bet him to be the number one overall pick. I think you got that next wave of NFL players, which is so enticing, which when you see Jaden Daniels come into the NFL and you go, I can get something like that with a guy with just as good an arm. Pro football today, only on Sports Grid. It's a new era in CFB to start off this year, put on full display. My take on this game is simple. I, I know some people will be upset about it. Good riddance to the Pac-12. Can you do it in terms of the week to week to week? I don't see a pathway for this team to miss the college football playoffs. We want to make sure you have those best bets in the entirety of our betting cards. That was the game! But he had that he the game was going there. There. Only on Sports Grid. If you're sliding DiVincenzo to the what? Uh, obviously, Terry Chenny Jr., that is actually dynamic uh, offensively and defensively. So we'll see how it works. I think it's a little bit of a work in progress. Do both teams win? Yes. I don't think at the end of the day, Minnesota could have afforded to keep Cat, Rudy, and Ant with that amount of money. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. I think the Washington Commanders are one of the best bets to win it all, or at the very least win the NFC. Their offensive line, I do want to say one thing. It's very average. The coaching is good. They're getting good coach for, good coach from Bobby Johnson, their line coach. Here from the Giants, but they've kind of overachieved. Let's call it like it is. Daniels has taken them up. Look, that division is not very good, and they could very well win it over the Eagles, but and the Cowboys, they're not a Super Bowl team. Newswire only on Sports Grid. Welcome to hour number three live right here on this Monday on the early line on Sports Grid and all across that Spiz Grizz network. He is Donnie Wright side. I am Ben Stevens. One more hour to go on a monumental Monday in sports. Maybe the biggest Monday night football game to end out week six in the history, the last decade Mm. of the National Football Mm. League because of the storylines and the stakes tonight in MetLife, AFC East divisional duel between the Jets and the Bills. We will break down every single aspect here in this third hour. A huge Monday night in the greater New York area. The Yankees start off the ALCS at home in the Bronx, hosting the Guardians. Dave Baseball out on the West Coast. It's game two of the NLCS for the other New York club, the Mets, taking on the Dodgers. The Dodgers dominant in game one. Will the Amazons even the set? Or will L.A. take command before we head up to Flushing and Queens? What a day we have, DRS. What a third and final hour in store here on TEL. Yes, and also for those Mets fans out there, once again, it's a great day for you. You probably get beat in game number two. Then you put your Yankees hats on for game number one here and become Yankees fans once again. So had to get that extra dig here. And by the way, also, Mets Jets fans could be down real bad by the end of the night. Let's hope not here. Let's keep the vibes high because we've got good ball games in baseball and fantastic NFL action tonight. But come on, man. Come on, Mets. What do you got? We'll see what they have bright and early. 1 p.m. Pacific time out at the ravine. A little bit after 7. East Coast scheduled for first pitch in the ALCS. Listen, it is great. We've got afternoon baseball wherever you reside. Holiday. Right into prime time inside Yankee Stadium as well. Monday night football. Speaking of Monday night football. DRS, again, the stakes tonight at MetLife are monumental the new york jets sub 500 dismissing and firing robert sala less than a week ago jeff Ulbrich is the interim head coach aaron Rodgers runs everything in the organization so with great expectation comes the mounting pressure on this monday can the jets beat the bills we ask mm. all of you and fade the public
DRS, you know we've been keeping tabs on the Fade the Public poll throughout oh, this, this season. When we ask a this best bet, how are things playing out? We did have a component of it on Friday where it was who wins the two decisive game fives in the LDS. First in Los Angeles on Friday, then Cleveland on Saturday afternoon. The public was trying to figure out Padres or Dodgers because the Tigers and Tarek Skubal were going to win. That didn't happen. Public now four and six in their fade to public poll best bets. And Donnie, here's what is at stake tonight for the public. Either the Bills win or they don't. That is it. The public loves them some Buffalo tonight. What is the best bet for Monday Night Football at Sports Grid? The Bills laying a short, short spread, point and a half on the road in East Rutherford has more than 51% of the votes. Mm. Donnie, you are back in the Jets. You are fit in the public. Tell the people why. Four and seven, the public are going to move after. I've never felt more comfortable here after a poll because, you know me, sometimes yeah. I'm with the public, sometimes I'm against them. But when I just flash this up, because here's what we do. I usually like one of the first people to vote on this. The minute it comes out, vote, hit the retweet button. But don't check it out yeah. until we get to this segment. That's done on purpose. Of course. I sort of want to be surprised where, like, the public is actually going. And I am surprised by this. 51% of the poll here between the Bills, Jets, over and under is going towards the Buffalo Bills. But why at this point? Like, I understand the Bills open up the season fantastic, loses two straight games, a must win for the Jets, and also one and a half points, which means you better pick the winner. 19% coming up here with the New York Jets at this point. I think the Jets' defense is better. And, yes, I'm expecting one of those bounces. And this isn't a handicap saying, hey, you fire your head coach, you get a bounce back. I'm telling you, so the numbers probably support that at that point. How many times do we see a coach getting fired and the team rises to the occasion? And not necessarily like we're just playing for the new coach in the locker room. Aaron Rodgers is playing for his livelihood in the Life. Jets media on this Monday night football game. If they lose to go to two and four, you can wipe their season away. And every question that will come his way. Also, do you think he goes on McAfee Tuesdays, right? Is he even going to show up on Pat McAfee tomorrow if they get beat tonight by the Bills and drop to two and four? And all they should yeah. be asking him is, hey, you got your head coach fired. Now it's not working out for you at this point. And is he going to say, like, look. I'm coming on the show because I'm going to talk for 30 seconds and then totally avoid every question. He knows that's what's at stake at this point. The media will dog him. I expect a good performance. I don't even need a great performance out of Aaron Rodgers because we'll go back to last year, Ben, right? The Jets, give me average quarterback play with that defense. You win football games. Hey, Aaron Rodgers, give me average quarterback to play with that defense. That's it. You'll win this football game. I'm taking the Jets. Give me the points tonight. They win on Monday Night Football. And DRS, you can scapegoat Robert Sala. You can think mm -hmm. that Jeff Ulbrich mm -hmm. is the better answer, and maybe mm -hmm. we buy into what the Jets PR department shared, that they believe in him as the future head coach, yeah. and everybody loves him, so they want to give him all the sample size. That's why they fired Sala after only five weeks. Here are the numbers. Since 2002, an NFL team that fires their head coach middle of the season in the immediate game after – 17 and 21 straight up, 22 and 16 against the spread. We're talking 14 cents of separation in the money line. It's an outright victory. It does not matter if the Jets lose by one in cover as a one and a half point underdog. This is an outright win or else. You saw the numbers for Aaron Rodgers tonight, 213 and a half. DRS, when you look at the props, he's gone over that in three straight games for the Jets. But there is no argument. Aaron Rodgers has been the issue. Three interceptions last week against the Vikings. Without any of those three, they win the game. Without the pick six early in the opening half, the defense did enough to hold the Vikings to only 16 points. They would have won the game without a pick six. They only allowed one offensive touchdown against Minnesota in London. Bo Nix and the Broncos, as you see there, go into MetLife, throw the ball for 60 yards, and win 10 to 9. The issue hasn't been the defense. The issue hasn't been Garrett Wilson. The issue hasn't been Robert Sala, Jeff Ulbrich, or Nathaniel Hackett. The issue has been Aaron Rodgers. He needs to change that narrative tonight. And it's rather simple as well, Donnie. If Aaron Rodgers does lead the New York Jets to a victory tonight against Buffalo, the Jets vault in to the top spot in the AFC East. They would be 3-3, three and three, as would Buffalo, but the direct tiebreaker would be in favor of Gang Green and thus first in the AFC East divisional standings. Yeah, and that's going to be big to watch it play out because as expecting Aaron Rodgers to be, you know, 
decent tonight. You have all your weapons there. You are healthy. The defense is playing well. Rely on that defense. Live the fight another day. Don't air mail a you know, slant pass over the middle on third and 12 because yeah. you're trying to make a big play. Punting sometimes is okay. And also, you're not getting the Buffalo Bills as 3-0 and team coming in high and mighty. They've lost two Correct. straight football games, both on the road and another road game. And as you pointed out, this is a game, if you're the Jets, you have to win. You don't win this game. There's probably going to be no playoffs, and it's going to be unbelievably that, you know, pounding that you're going to get from the New York media. But if you are just looking at a simple equation here, sometimes it's just how you're going to defend the pass tonight. The number one pass defense or pass coverage skills on pro football focus is what? That's the New York Jets. You know who's number 26? Yeah. That's the Buffalo Bills. You should have opportunities downfield for the Jets to make big plays. Why? Because I think they're going to get that ground game cranked up as well. You can run on the Bills. You can pass on that secondary. Aaron Rodgers just be average Aaron Rodgers tonight you'll come away with a victory DRS of quarterbacks who have started at least half of the games of their team for their team this year Aaron Rodgers has the fifth worst completion percentage in the NFL 61 percent who's worse than that Josh Allen the Bills in their two consecutive losses have not looked good of course when you win games you score more than the opponent so it should not be a surprise to know Buffalo had scored 31 or more in their first three games of the year 20 or less in their last two Josh Allen the completion percentage has been abysmal last week nine of 30 9 of 30. I don't even know how that's possible for 131 yards. Plenty more of a breakdown on Monday night in MetLife. The injury analysis with the Pro Football Doc next. time coming off of a, a wild Saturday of college football people are consistently peeking over at this board he actually would not be my number one overall pick nor would I bet him to be the number one overall pick I think you got that next wave of NFL players which is so enticing which when you see Jaden Daniels coming to the NFL and you go I can get something like that with a guy with just as good an arm pro football today only on sports grid it's a new era in CFP to start off this year, put on full display. My take on this game is simple. I, I know some people will be upset about it. Good riddance to the Pac-12. Can you do it in terms of the week to week to week? I don't see a pathway for this team to miss the college football playoffs. We want to make sure you have those best bets in the entirety of our betting cards. That was the game! But he had that he the game was going going there. There. Only on Sports Grid. If you're sliding DiVincenzo to the what? Uh, obviously, Terry Cheney Jr., that is actually dynamic uh, offensively and defensively. So we'll see how it works. I think it's a little bit of a work in progress. Do both teams win? Yes. I don't think at the end of the day, Minnesota could have afforded to keep Cat, Rudy, and Ant for that amount of money. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. I think the Washington Commanders are one of the best bets to win it all, or at the very least win the NFC. Their offensive line, I do want to say one thing. It's very average. The coaching is good. They're getting good coach for, good coaching from Bobby Johnson, their line coach, here from the Giants. But they've kind of overachieved. Let's call it like it is. Gales has taken them up. Look, that division is not very good, and they can very well win it over the Eagles but and the Cowboys. They're not a Super Bowl team. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Live right here on this Monday on the early line on Sports Grid. One of the realities of any given week in the National Football League is how dangerous the game can be. So with the wins and the losses, we provide the injury analysis and insight with the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, live right here on this Monday. Doc, as always, we appreciate the time. Thanks for being here on the early line. Yeah, thanks for having me. Unfortunately, in the uh, collision, not contact sport, but the collision sport of football, injuries are inevitable. 
Mm. Yeah, so Dr. Chow, let's start with what happened yesterday in Dallas. Aiden Hutchinson for the Lions, despite a monumental Detroit victory, is likely out for the rest of this season. A broken tibia on a gruesome and significant lower leg injury. Doc, of course, his season has come to a close, but we want that insight. What is the recovery process like for the promising young edge rusher for Detroit? Yeah, and uh, for those who love graphic stuff, otherwise don't look at my Twitter handle, uh, Pro Football Doc. There's some slowdown zoomed in video. Literally, his lower leg wraps around a teammate's lower leg. It literally bends like it's rubber. And not only is his tibia broken, the fibula is broken too. Why do the lines just talk about the tibia? Because that's the bigger bone, and that's the only one that needed the urgent emergent surgery with a rod. The fibula, the associated bone, will heal on its own. So it is a tibia and fibula fracture. That's why he had surgery, unstable fracture, before he even flew home. And the good news, and I always try and focus on good news, as you guys know, is this is not an Alex Smith injury. This is not an open wound or a compound fracture. This should not get infected. He will come back full go, unlike Alex Smith, who was a little bit of a shell of himself because of the nature of the injury. That was a plating surgery. That was a dirt or sock in the wound. This is not that early surgery. Expect full recovery in 2025, but for the season 2025, I'm hearing chatter about Super Bowl, if he can get there. Look, I don't want to douse anyone's dreams. I mean, a lot of people go to the convenience store and try and win the lottery, but not many do. Hmm. And uh, let's just hope for the good, clean recovery. Even if his bone were healed, he's not going to be in shape to play and be at Aiden Hutchinson. No way, no how, but let's take solace in that he'll be fine for next season. Always a tough injury there, and you saw both teams come out basically at midfield here. Such a great football player, devastating injury for the Lions. We certainly wish him well. But if we, we're we going to get back to some of the football players here, Doc. But let's take a look at a head coaching issue yesterday. Jim Harbaugh, atrial flutter. Number one, what causes that, Doc? What's the treatment, and is he okay at this point? First of all, full disclosure, I love Jim Harbaugh. I knew him from his playing days. Mm-hmm. Occasionally texted him here, this, that, the other. I have not talked to him about this injury but based on what it was, look, it's scary. How often do you see a head coach walk off the sideline in the middle of the game with yeah. medical personnel? And then they say it's cardiac in nature. Once again, let's talk about the good news. This was not a myocardial infarction. This was not a heart attack. Atrial flutter is an arrhythmia, and anything that involves the heart is indeed scary. But this is not an Urban Meyer, he's got to retire from football, stress-type situation. It's an arrhythmia that he admitted to that he's been dealing with before and even said he's, quote, 2-0. and He's been dealt with it before. It's to the atrium, not the ventricle. He wasn't in any danger. He probably felt his heart racing some or a little irregular heartbeat, which is disconcerting, you know, and you got it checked out with EKG. There's medications, there's other treatments, there's uh, other non-surgical treatments. I don't see this changing his pattern at all, which is the good news, I would believe. And as Jim always says, uh, who's got it better than us or him and whatever, he's going to continue to uh, flourish. The Chargers got a good win. But most importantly, I wouldn't worry about this too much. Of course, they'll treat him and have caution, but this is not an oh my gosh situation where he's got to quit football or really take care of himself or family. Don't see it as life-threatening or endangering in any way. The Bolts, a big win in Denver yesterday. Jim Harbaugh did, in fact, return to the sideline, and that is just classic Jim Harbaugh claiming it is 2-0, his winning record, dealing with his heart issues dr chow as we look around the nfl last night on sunday night football no malik neighbors once again for the new york giants earlier in the day two young promising wide receivers chris olave for new orleans marvin harrison jr for arizona exited games early with concussions i always think it's worth a reminder here as we get deeper into the nfl season what exactly is the concussion protocol what does it take to return to game action well, let's break some news here on uh, on the morning line here, the early line. Uh, Chris Olave is not playing in his next game. They play on Thursday against Denver. A, very short week. B, this, this is his fourth documented concussion, if you count college. 
he had one last year as well. They're going to exercise some caution here. There's no way to rush him through for Thursday, and that's what's best for him. On the other side, Patrick Sertain, who's probably covering him on Thursday, is unlikely to play either with his concussion with the Broncos. Uh, Marvin Harrison Jr., we don't see previous injury with concussion. We'll have to let that play out. But we knew he was ruled out. Once he stumbled on the field, that's a, you know, a sign or symptom, and he needed to be ruled out and was. Doc, by the way, checking out SixScore.com for tonight's action that fuels you. I need some intel help here. The Buffalo Bills banged up at running back with James Cook and wide receiver with Khalil Shakir. What do we anticipate from both of those players tonight? Well, you know, the good news is Josh Allen, you know, there was a lot of worry about concussion, and that hasn't surfaced publicly at least, so he seemed Mm. to go. So at least that's good news. Shakir missed the previous week with a high ankle. I think he probably misses again. Cook may try and play Mm. through, but he not as effective and the line I see the line creeping a little bit the other way here because of it towards the Jets of course the head coaching situation for New York but the Jets the big question mark is uh CJ Mosley will he finally play through his turf toe otherwise the Jets overall are fairly healthy you saw the field views there. You can see them again at SICscore.com as well. The great analysis to get you set for any individual matchup in the NFL. The pro football doc, Dr. David Chow. We appreciate the time, Doc, as always on this Monday. Thank you very much. We'll talk a little bit of Major League Baseball playoff action. That's up next here on TEL. time coming off of a a wild Saturday of college football people are consistently peeking over at this board he actually would not be my number one overall pick nor would I bet him to be the number one overall pick I think you got that next wave of NFL players which is so enticing which when you see Jaden Daniels coming to the NFL and you go I can get something like that with a guy with just as good an arm pro football today only on sports grid It's a new era in CFB to start off this year, put on full display. My take on this game is simple. I I know some people will be upset about it. Good riddance to the Pac-12. Can you do it in terms of the week to week to week? I don't see a pathway for this team to miss the college football playoffs. We want to make sure you have those best bets in the entirety of our betting cards. That was the thinking! But he had that program was already going there! Only on SportsGrid. I do a sliding DiVincenzo to the one. Uh, obviously, Terrence Cheney Jr., that is actually dynamic uh, offensively and defensively. So we'll see how it works. I think it's a little bit of a work in progress. Do both teams win? Yes. I don't think at the end of the day, Minnesota could have afforded to keep Cat, Rudy, and Ant with that amount of money. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. I think the Washington Commanders are one of the best bets to win it all, or at the very least win the NFC. Their offensive line, I do want to say one thing. It's very average. The coaching is good. They're getting good coach for, good coaching from Bobby Chatz, their line coach, came over from the Giants. But they've kind of overachieved. Let's call it like it is. Daniels has taken them up. Look, that division is not very good, and they could very well win it over the Eagles but and the Cowboys. They're not a Super Bowl team. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. What a Monday doubleheader we have in League Championship Series action in October in the Major League Baseball postseason. It mm-hmm. starts bright and early, 1 p.m. Pacific time out in downtown Los Angeles between the Dodgers and the Mets. It is game number two of the NLCS. The Dodgers dominate in game number one, nine zip. 
They have not allowed a run, the Dodgers, since the middle of game number three in the NLDS against San Diego. They blanked the Padres in the final four frames. They blanked the Padres in both game four and game five, and the Mets last night in the opening game of the LCS. 33 consecutive scoreless innings. The Dodgers holding their opposition to zip and zilch it matches an mlb playoff record dating back to 1966 we're not exactly sure who will try to continue that streak today for the dodgers at least to open in game two on the other side it's sean Manaya for the mets the dodgers greater than a dollar and 40 cent favorite minus 142 on the money line the total for game two is eight and a half drs how do you see game two playing out at the ravine the handicaps are tough as we get into the playoffs and it wouldn't be as tough here if i knew the starting pitcher on both teams that they anticipate going five to six innings you can handicap off of that and take your way look at the batters and say i'm gonna get at least three at bats against the said pitcher unless he really gets roughed up early in the game but if you're looking at the line itself that plus 120 in the mets that's the line I probably dig into. Donnie, how could you do that? The Dodgers have to give up any runs in three years, it feels like at this point. And the Mets just got run out nine to nothing yesterday. Understandably. The Mets had a whirlwind, unbelievable victory just to get into the playoffs, beat the Philadelphia Phillies, a lot of celebration out on the West Coast, caught a pitcher that absolutely dominated them. And away you move forward. The good thing about baseball, where they could beat one to nothing or nine to nothing, you're still down 0 1. Doesn't make any difference. Not down yeah. three games because you lost by nine runs. You do have a quality lineup, which Lindor, Vientos, Nimo, and Alonso as a first one through four, very, very good. Here's the issue, though. Brazier is listed as the starting pitcher. Brazier usually right. goes one inning, maybe gets into the second inning before they pull you for a better matchup. So it's hard for me to come on and say, oh, I really like Lindor in this matchup. He crushes right-handed pitching. Same thing with Vientos, Nimmo, and Alonzo, all very good ISO power numbers and weighted on base percentages over the past month against right-handed pitching. But for my money here, do you think that the Mets can win this ball game? I actually do. But do I want to take the plus 120 against that hot Dodgers team? Not necessarily. So if I'm saying, in the way I, I started it out, the New York Mets have to get on the board early in this game, no doubt about it. Third yeah. inning, fourth inning, fifth inning, they haven't scored yet. That's just going to be an avalanche that's going to pile on, and they might not even make it to game number five at that point and might get swept. Contrarian play, Mets team total over three and a half here at the FanDuel Sportsbook. Mm. This is a book. I understand how good the Dodgers bullpen has been. It's still a bullpen here. It's not Sandy Koufax on the mound for eight innings and then, you know, Kenley wow. Jansen in his prime coming into the ninth inning, right? You should be able to hit in nine at-bats against a bullpen here. I'm not calling for a Mets victory, but this needs to be their best chance. Manaya's is on the mound. He's been solid. He's a left-handed pitcher. He's a quirky lefty, which can throw off your lineup here. The Mets absolutely have to win this game, but if they do, I don't know if it's a two-to-one effort here. I think the Mets have to score early mm. and often to get a cushion here to quiet that Dodger crowd, and we shouldn't have any shadows creeping in until much later in the game, which means we might not even see them by 4.30 p.m. I expect a good effort out of the Mets. Give me the team total Mets over three and a half as a contrarian play today. Donnie Wright side, the conviction in that breakdown, yeah. hard to not buy mm -hmm. stock into it. Ryan Brazier was the opener for LA in game four against San Diego. He started great. Of course, the Dodgers blanked the Padres in that matchup, but only 19 pitches for Brazier, who actually earned the win in game number one in relief against the Padres in the LDS. Sean Manaya has been pretty solid this postseason and really all year for the New York Mets. He has pitched 12 innings. He has allowed only three earned runs. He did get the win against the Phillies in game three back in Queens. Seven innings of work, only a single earned run allowed, striking out six, just three base knocks. He did pitch in a game in which the Mets did lose to the Milwaukee Brewers in their opening wild card round but when he exited the game after five innings of solid work the Mets did hold the lead we'll get into this game I promise you with Tom Vecchio it's the Yankees and the Guardians game one quickly DRS the pinstripes a home favorite Carlos Rodon gets the start will the Yankees open up the ALCS with a 1-0 series advantage I do believe they have a good chance at that. But again, this is the, if you want to be in this series, Cleveland, you got to win game number one. Instead of taking them on a side, give me Ramirez and Lane Thomas RBI opportunities. They hammer left-handed pitching back. The offense ignited in game five for Cleveland. The prop perspective next.
we're at a point in time coming off of a, a wild Saturday of college football. People are consistently peeking over at this board. He actually would not be my number one overall pick, nor would I bet him to be the number one overall pick. I think you got that next wave of NFL players, which is so enticing, which when you see Jaden Daniels come into the NFL and you go, I can get something like that with a guy with just as good an arm. Pro football today, only on Sports Grid. It's a new era in CFB to start off this year, put on full display. My take on this game is simple. I, I know some people will be upset about it. Good riddance to the Pac-12. Can you do it in terms of the week to week to week? I don't see a pathway for this team to miss the college football playoffs. We want to make sure you have those best bets in the entirety of our betting cards. That was so the game! But he had that he program! Was was going going there. There. Only on Sports Grid. If you're sliding DiVincenzo to the what? Uh, obviously, Terry Cheney Jr., that is actually dynamic uh, offensively and defensively. So we'll see how it works. I think it's a little bit of work in progress. Do both teams win? Yes. I don't think at the end of the day, Minnesota could have afforded to keep Cat, Rudy, and Ant for that amount of money. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. I think the Washington Commanders are one of the best bets to win it all, or at the very least win the NFC. Their offensive line, I do want to say one thing. It's very average. The coaching is good. They're getting good coach for good coach for Bobby Johnson, their line coach, here from the Giants. But they've kind of overachieved, let's call it like it is. Daniels has taken them up. Look, that division's not very good, and they could very well win it over the Eagles, but and the Cowboys. They're not a Super Bowl team. Newswire only on Sports Grid. What a Monday we have in the world of sports. So, of course, you need that prop perspective. The jack of all trades is here at Sports Grid's Tom Vecchio. Joining us on the early line, bright and early on this Monday. Vecchio, I won't bury the lead. You're feeling good after a very profitable Sunday now into Monday. We need that optimism and positivity to come through. Monday night football, the Jets and the Bills, a doubleheader of Monday playoff action in the LCS in MLB with some afternoon baseball as well and of course some action on the ice, I am sure. What more could you want for a Monday? Yeah, this is an awesome day of sports. This Monday night game, I have to say, has to be one of the tougher games to break down. There's so many moving parts for both teams. We've got some early NHL action starting at 1 p.m. Jack Hughes at plus 125 will get his first goal of the season versus the Utah Hockey Woo! Club. I'm ready to mm. roll. We'll not get Donnie's thoughts on the Utah Hockey, Hockey Club. Club as a name or <laughs> franchise. We'll save that for another day, more than likely Wednesday. All right, Vecchio, let's look at the Monday night matchup in MetLife. There is so much at stake, even for a football game in week number six, because of everything that has happened with the New York Jets and everything that is expected for Gang Green this year. Of course, they fire Robert Sala this past Tuesday. Interim head coach Jeff Ulbrich takes the reins. A new offensive play caller for Aaron Rodgers and that offense as well. So Vecchio, with everything that has happened and everything on the line tonight, how does that affect your handicap for this game that sees New York as a slight home underdog at MetLife? Yeah, like I said, this is an extremely tough game because we are working with a bit of coach speak. And, and Jeff Olberg said that they want to be committed to the run game, which, you know, throws things for a bit of a loop. Is, is he just saying that? Does he actually mean it? What kind of usage are we even getting out of not just Brees Hall, but Braylon Allen, who has been legit good? And then on the other side for the Bills, you know, Josh Allen started off the year super hot. He's been kind of yeah. some down games over the past two James Cook is expected to play, but he's not fully healthy. We're still waiting on an update on Khalil Shakir. So between injuries on the Bills side, and I'm just going to say like a giant question mark when it comes to the Jets offense, things are really, really tough. So we kind of have to read between the lines a little bit when it comes to saying, oh, they want to be committed to the run game. What does that actually mean? You know, how much are we actually going to be talking about that? Is Does 
does Aaron Rodgers have full control at the line as he normally does to kind of audible out of place, even if it is a one play? Does he have some kind of control? So it's a bit of a mystery tonight. I think I have some interesting angles to attack, though. By the way, 40 and a half is the total tonight, Tom, in this game. So if you're a contrarian better, it probably trends towards the under. But again, being a contrarian saying, if we get a lot of offense, boy, can this be profitable? Because the numbers I'm about to talk to you about here, very atypical from what we usually see. Aaron Rodgers over 213 and a half. Josh Allen, Justin Fields like 197 and a half <laughs> is his passing prop to throw two touchdowns, something these guys do relatively often. Aaron Rodgers to do that plus 154. Josh Allen to do that plus 168. Look at this bonanza of numbers, but it's all relative to the game plan, Tom. Right, exactly. I think, you know, I'm on board with Allen over 197 and a half pass, and it's maybe one of my favorite props. Yeah, they're not, they may not have clear secure. We do need final confirmation, but the offense should be moving. And I'm also taking into account that if James Cook isn't healthy, we're going to have two backup running backs in there between uh, Ty Johnson and Ray Davis. So I do think are legitimate options tonight to see some usage, even if James Cook does play. So I like Allen. I think they can move the ball in the air. If the Jets do control things on the ground and they do get out ahead, the Bills are going to have to pass and they're going to, Josh Allen's going to have to be Superman, as he always does. Yeah, the two down games aren't amazing when we're looking at like his recent consistency. We also see a game where he's a little bit light on the yards versus Miami, but we have to remember that game script got out of control when the Bills got up super far, like super when Tua got hurt, right? So I really don't yeah. want to take that into account when we're evaluating his yards per game. I want to look at his overall, uh, his overall yards per game and obviously taking into context how he was getting there. So I do really like Allen tonight. 197 and a half, as DRS mentioned, that is Insane. it. Under in three of the last four for Josh Allen, including both of the losses. In the completion percentage in the last two games, 55% or lower, 9 of 30 somehow, some way against the Houston Texans. But maybe some bounce back. However, the Jets are the best passing defense in all of the NFL. Let's get back to Aaron Rodgers. His best bud, Nathaniel Hackett, no longer the offensive play caller. It is Todd Downing. And, Vecchio, you could make a lot of assessments or takeaways from what the Jets have decided to do after only five weeks and the dismissal of Robert Sala. For me, the onus is on one guy. It's Aaron Rodgers. So what do you expect out of Rodgers? What it means for the offensive game plan for the New York Jets and how it affects your handicaps of the props on this Monday night? I would like to say that Aaron Rodgers comes in and has like a really efficient game where he may not go over his attempts prop. He may go under that, but he may be going over his completion prop. Right. So we're looking at like Aaron Rodgers taking full control of the game. He's audibling at the line. He's seeing what he wants. He, he is being that quarterback that the Jets need to, him to be. And ultimately, he's very, very efficient. I wouldn't be surprised if he does have two passing touchdowns. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets the under on his yards as well. Because, again, we have to add in a little bit of this coach speak that they want to be committed to the run. So they're committed to the run, getting to the red zone. And then maybe Rodgers does flex the, the offensive capability and audible at the line to get some passing touchdowns. So I think this game is going to be hopefully a good indication of what we will see from the Jets moving forward. And we can use this as a new starting point and say, this is what their offense will look like for the rest of the year. Because I have some interest in Garrett Wilson under, I have some interest in going to both Braylon Allen and Brees Hall overs. I think there's some interesting angles to take mm. combined Brees Hall plus, plus Braylon Allen combined yards in the same game parlay like 60 plus each oh. combined that is certainly on the table tonight let's take a look at some of those receiving prop options tonight if we're looking at Garrett Wilson for the New York Jets top man on the totem pole here Tom 60 and a half receiving yards followed by Lazard Hall Williams and Conklin now the issue is going to be is we do need some information on who is actually going to be playing for the Buffalo Bills at that right. wide out spot because right now the only tight end slash wide receiver listed at Vandal right now Dalton Kincaid 39 and a half Tom, let's play this out and say Shakir does not play tonight. Are there any advantages that you're going to take care of with maybe some cheap numbers on secondary options for the Buffalo Bills? Yeah, it would have to start with Dalton Kincaid. I would like to continue to take shots on Keon Coleman, the rookie, who has been good getting downfield a little bit. But, you know, if the Jets are bringing the pressure, I think Dalton Kincaid should bring that safety net to Josh Allen again. After the game that they had 9 of 13 last week versus the Texans, like they need to establish, not just establish the run, but just establish some confidence in the passing game. Let's get the ball. Let's move the chains. Let's pick up a first down. And Dalton Cage showed that last year, and that's the role he should be playing tonight. 
You only have two props out for the skill players for Buffalo, Kincaid and James Cook, who is not fully healthy at this moment. Vecchio, you have shared with us what you believe of the skill position players for New York. What are the actual bets as you dive through on how you want to attack Brees Hall and perhaps Garrett Wilson as well? Yeah, let's go to Brees Hall over 13 and a half carries. Um, you know, he's averaging at, right at that number. He was over in the first three, under in the last two. I think this will be the, the flipping of the script where he does get over 13 and a half. They want to establish that run. They want to go to Garrett Wilson under six and a half playing into that. They're not going to be passing as much. We do look at Wilson. He's been under in four of the five games this season. The last game, he was over with 101 yards. He had 13 receptions on 23 targets. I'm telling you, that's not going to happen tonight. He is not going to have 13 receptions. So I will buy into at least a little bit of the narrative and take Garrett Wilson under 16 and a half yards tonight. Tom, let's take a look at some Major League Baseball this afternoon. A double header. Obviously, the Mets and the Dodgers get it started, followed by the Guardians and the Yankees. Any looks tonight in this Major League Baseball card? Uh, I would be going to Rodone under strikeouts, under five and a half, and maybe that's a little bit of bias for me as a Yankees fan because, in theory, if he does hit the over, the Yankees would be in a good spot to be winning that game. So it is sitting at minus 155 or whatever is under five and a half strikeouts. But we have seen the Guardians offense come to life. As you guys mentioned in the last segment, they were a little bit slow in the first mm. portion of that series. They're starting to get a little bit better. You know, getting hit around this, that, or the other thing. There's a little bit of wind blowing out at Yankee Stadium tonight. It is a little bit cooler, but they will be quick to yeah. pull – Rodone, they, they're coming off of plenty of rest. The bullpen is ready to go. So ultimately, I do like Rodone under five. Sports Grids, Tom Vecchio on a huge Monday, always delivering, whether it's Monday Night Football, baseball doubleheader in October, or Jack Hughes tickling the twine for the first time in 2024. Vecchio, we'll see you later on Sports Grid. More on the early line next. time coming off of a, a wild Saturday of college football people are consistently peeking over at this board he actually would not be my number one overall pick nor would I bet him to be the number one overall pick I think you got that next wave of NFL players which is so enticing which when you see Jaden Daniels come into the NFL and you go I can get something like that with a guy with just as good an arm pro football today only on sports grid it's a new era in CFB to start off this year, put on full display. My take on this game is simple. I, I know some people will be upset about it. Good riddance to the Pac-12. Can you do it in terms of the week to week to week? I don't see a pathway for this team to miss the college football playoffs. We want to make sure you have those best bets in the entirety of our betting card. That was so the thinking! But he had that he program! Was was going going there. There. Only on Sports Grid. If you're sliding DiVincenzo to the what? Uh, obviously, Terry Cheney Jr., that is actually dynamic uh, offensively and defensively. So we'll see how it works. I think it's a little bit of a work in progress. Do both teams win? Yes. I don't think at the end of the day, Minnesota could have afforded to keep Cat, Rudy, and Ant with that amount of money. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. I think the Washington Commanders are one of the best bets to win it all, or at the very least win the NFC. Their offensive line, I do want to say one thing. It's very average. The coaching is good. They're getting good coach for, good coach from Bobby Chatz to their line coach. Came from the Giants, but they've kind of overachieved. Let's call it like it is. Daniels has taken them up. Look, that division's not very good, and they could very well win it over the Eagles but and the Cowboys. They're not a Super Bowl team. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Live right here on this Monday on the early line on Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. He is Donnie Wright side. We set the stage one final time for a monumental Monday to end out week six. At MetLife, it's the Jets 
and the Bills. The RS on paper, this game is a great conclusion mm. to any week on Monday Night Football in primetime. Divisional duel, Josh Allen and Buffalo, Aaron Rodgers and New York. Then you add in the stakes. Whoever wins tonight will sit atop the AFC East. Even the Jets with a victory yeah. at 3-3 three and three, would hold the tiebreaker advantage over Buffalo early. But then you add in everything that we have seen in the last six days and really the last 20 months since Aaron Rodgers decided he wanted to play for New York. Robert Sala fired on Tuesday. Jeff Ulbrich, the interim head coach. Nathaniel Hackett demoted. Todd Downing promoted. And all of the pressure on Aaron Rodgers. It comes to a head tonight in East Rutherford, New Jersey. The Jets remain a slight home underdog will the Jets win with all of the mounting pressure on Aaron Rodgers and Gang Green the Jets win tonight I, I do believe that and maybe you'd get a different angle out of me if James Cook was 100% healthy and clear Shakir was too then probably the Jets wouldn't have lost their last two games either at that point but they did and there's a chance that they're going to lose three straight games and one of the hardest scenarios in professional sports other than like let's go on the road on a Thursday night after no practice and that's really hard to do is having three straight road games in the NFL you're exhausted at the end of it and a must win game for both of these teams I think actually favors the Jets slightly here now I don't think anything in the room Ben actually Actually changes with the offense per se on the Jets. You know, Nathaniel Hackett's now out there. Downing's going to call the plays, as you said. I understand all that. But you know what does change here when Robert Sala gets fired? It's Aaron Rodgers understanding when he's in a moment by himself going like, it's actually on me now. I got to play good football. And you shouldn't have to recenter yourself as a Hall of Fame quarterback to say, oh, now it's finally on me. It's usually always on you. But I just think now it's he understands the weight and the magnitude of this game tonight where it's reflected. Because let me get something straight here. If the Jets lose this game 40-39 to 39, and Aaron Rodgers throws for 385 yards and five touchdowns and they still get beat in this game, then so be it at that point. It's not his fault. But the way the defense has played, it's been the offense's issues for why the Jets are under 500. He understands that. I expect a clean game tonight. I would be surprised if Aaron Rodgers turns the football over, which means, again, Aaron Rodgers being average should be good enough to win tonight, rely on the running game, the defense, make those passing plays when they're available, and I think the Jets come away with a victory. DRS, you already said it. The Bills are a bottom 10 rushing defense in the National Football League. It should be a game where the New York Jets can get back to the ground. With that being said, they have averaged 2.8 yards per carry and 2.6 yards per pop in their two consecutive losses. 64 yards or less in the last two for the Jets against the Broncos and the Vikings. The defense for New York has done enough. They held Minnesota to 16 offensive points, one offensive touchdown last week in London. They held the Broncos to 10 offensive points and 60 passing yards out of Bo Nix two weeks ago on Sunday. The issue has not been Robert Sala, the coaching staff, or the defense. The issue has been Aaron Rodgers. Three interceptions last week against the Vikings. In fact, DRS, in both of the two straight losses for Gang Green, 45 pass attempts or more for Aaron Rodgers. Not exactly how you would describe a picture-perfect offensive recipe for a 40-year-old quarterback coming off a torn Achilles. It is time to get back to the ground game. I will just say this. Aaron Rodgers has been sacked eight times in their last two losses, only five times in the first three games of this year. There has been some issue with the cadence, perhaps. We'll see what Aaron Rodgers delivers and DRS if you do believe in the Jets how much do you believe in either Brees Hall or Braylon Allen tonight I do I I really do because I think that's going to have to be the center point of your argument of why the Jets are going to win this game yes Aaron Rodgers can throw for a lot of yards yes he can be productive we just haven't seen that yet and I just haven't seen that explosiveness out of Brees Hall just yet Braylon Allen is a quality backup both of those guys should eat tonight some other fun prop bets too as you see some of those primetime props coming up yeah we're expected Brees Hall to be that lead dog in the backfield 60 plus yard rushing should be on the table but how about some fun ones on their game specials Brees Hall to record five rushing yards in each quarter tonight Ben 
plus 140 Ooh. price here. If you think he's going to get a little bit dangerous here and hit that 60 to 70 number, how about Brees Hall to record 25 plus rushing yards in each half tonight, plus 155. So other ways to get mm. involved that don't sound so crazy, but can still get you that plus money. I do think it's going to be paramount that the Jets play good defense, which I wish they will, which means that running game is going to be in play, Ben, for a full four quarters. Not we're in the late third quarter and the Buffalo Bills are up 27 to 13 and we can no longer run the football anymore. I do think the catalyst for the game plan is the Jets to return to the roots, get some explosive plays yeah. out of the run game, work off a of play action mm. here. Garrett Wilson should be able to eat Conklin over the middle. Mike Williams might even get involved in the red zone here. But for me, it is the Jets ground game. If Brees Hall is explosive tonight, the Jets are going to be able to win this game. And, Donnie, part of that is also because of the health and the status of some significant contributors for Buffalo, both defensively but mainly on the offensive side. Khalil Shakir, as you heard from Dr. Chow, don't expect him to play tonight. No props listed. James Cook slightly banged up but does have the numbers out. In a number on Josh Allen, we may never see again, but is indicative of how bad the offense has looked the last two weeks for Buffalo. 197 and a half is the passing yards prop. <laughs> Donnie, I think the Jets could win this football game. I think that's a must bet because it's just a number based on precedent you might never see again in the career of Josh Allen. It's extremely low. And also, if Cook is not there, then it starts to elevate those anytime rushing touchdown props here for Josh Allen. And also, yeah. you're just taking a look at if they are down, his rushing props themselves to go over and rush for 45 to 50 yards to sort of take control. And yes, if I do think they're going to lose that game, you are going to be throwing. It's not a lot of yards. hit 200 here. And quite frankly, yeah. he probably should do that regardless of any defense that he's actually playing or any other teammates that he has available here. I think it's going to be a good game. And also keep in mind, this is the Meadowlands tonight. 15-mile-an-hour winds are expected here with much higher sustained winds, maybe 25-mile-an-hour or higher with the gust here. Keep an eye on that, too. Quickly, DRS, best bet in baseball, Mets team total over three and a half? Mets team total over three and a half. Take a couple of those RBI props we talked about for the Guardians and Mill. Lane Thomas, Ramirez, let's go. DRS, enjoy the money line. More of TEL next. time coming off of a, a wild Saturday of college football people are consistently peeking over at this board he actually would not be my number one overall pick nor would I bet him to be the number one overall pick I think you got that next wave of NFL players which is so enticing which when you see Jaden Daniels coming to the NFL and you go I can get something like that with a guy with just as good an arm pro football today only on sports grid it's a new era in CFB to start off this year, put on full display. My take on this game is simple. I, I know some people will be upset about it. Good riddance to the Pac-12. Can you do it in terms of the week to week to week? I don't see a pathway for this team to miss the college football playoffs. We want to make sure you have those best bets in the entirety of our betting cards. That was so thinking! But he had that he program was already going there. There. Only on Sports Grid. If you're starting DiVincenzo to the what? Uh, obviously, Terrence Cheney Jr., that is actually dynamic uh, offensively and defensively. So we'll see how it works. I think it's a little bit of a work in progress. Do both teams win? Yes. I don't think at the end of the day, Minnesota could have afforded to keep Cat, Rudy, and Ant with that amount of money. Betting above the rim. Only on Sports Grid. I think the Washington Commanders are one of the best bets to win it all, or at the very least win the NFC. Their offensive line, I do want to say one thing. It's very average. The coaching is good. They're getting good coach for, good coach from Bobby Johnson, their line coach. They were from the Giants, but they've kind of overachieved. Let's call it like it is. Daniels has taken them up. Look, that division is not very good, and they could very well win it over the Eagles but and the Cowboys. They're not a Super Bowl team. Newswire, only on Sports Grid.
Welcome back to the early line live right here on this Monday all across the sports grid network just a couple of things around the NFL before we dive into what should be another sensational Saturday in college football the total for tonight's Monday night football game on the rise 40 and a half no longer 41 and a hook on the FanDuel Sportsbook between the Jets and the Bills for a monumental Monday night football game at MetLife. I am excited for tomorrow to react to that one. If Aaron Rodgers and the Jets win, I'll eat a little bit of crow. I do start to favor the Jets tonight just because of the impact and the importance of this game, but namely the injuries on the other side for Buffalo. I do believe the prop of 197 and a hook on Josh Allen is almost unfathomable, and thus it is worth a bet. But one of the reasons that the winner of tonight's game will be in first place in the AFC East, a division we expected to be one of the best in football this year, is because it has not been. The Jets, when they win, they're 3-3. Three and three. Buffalo is 3-3. Three and three. Nobody in the AFC East has a winning record, and New York would be in first. If Buffalo wins, they would be the only team above 500 at 4-2, and two, also in first place. Part of that is, of course, the Jets' struggles, but the quarterback room in Miami and the health around Tua Tungavailoa. Some news on this Monday morning. Miami in the bye week over this past weekend. Mike McDaniel sharing with reporters early on Monday that for the first time since the injury to Tua Tungavailoa, week two against Buffalo, Miami as an organization expects to have Tua back at a point this year still on injured reserve still is not eligible to even return to practice until a week from Wednesday that's October 23rd but very good signs of course for Tua Tungabailoa to be back on the football field he has not been showing symptoms for a few weeks that is great and if it is his decision and his family's choice that he wants to be back on the football field. We wish nothing for uh, but the best for Tua Tungavailoa. Now we transition to college football. As we shared last week, everybody had circled Saturday, October 12th, week number seven, as one of the best Saturdays expected in college football. And oh boy, did it deliver. And then you think to yourself, how does it get better? How could it possibly be better than the chaos that we saw to start off October in the seven ranked teams losing in week six in the monumental matchups that we had week seven game of the year number two in Eugene between Oregon and Ohio State three games going to overtime Penn State and USC Tennessee and Florida in the thriller in the top 15 tilt in Baton Rouge between Ole Miss and LSU Alabama surviving against South Carolina Carolina. historical starts for Iowa State in, in Army in Pitt in Indiana then you look at what we have on this Saturday in week number eight come on man take a gander a significant Saturday in the SEC one versus five it's Texas and Georgia the Longhorns a three and a half point favorite in prime time in Austin against the Bulldogs. This was a pick em in the summer. Now three and a half in favor of Texas. The third Saturday of October is always a dandy between Tennessee and Alabama. The last time it was played on Rocky Top in 2022, they were singing Rocky Top all Saturday night long as Tennessee snapped a 16-game losing skid to the Crimson Tide. We go back to Knoxville. Both teams survive in a bounce-back spot on Saturday. Tennessee in overtime as a 16-and-a-half-point home favorite against Florida. Alabama as a three-touchdown home favorite against South Carolina. Miami had an open week a week ago. Now they head for a crucial ACC game to Louisville to take on the cards. You see all of these numbers back on the board. LSU and Arkansas, the Bayou Bengals now in the top 10. Fayetteville has been a difficult place to win this year. All of these spreads, less than a touchdown. That's almost unheard of in college football in shows how good of a weekend we can't anticipate in week number eight 
Indiana unbeaten 6-0 against the Nebraska team trying to become bowl eligible for the first time since 2016 with one more win. That's at noon. What a way to start Saturday. Top 25 tilt, Illinois and Michigan. Again, we are so lucky to have college football in this 2024 season has been exceptional to start. The early line returns tomorrow, 8 a.m. Eastern time on Sports.